Hello, fellow dental colleagues, alarm providers, and well wishers. Thank you for taking time out to view this video. I'm very humbled and honored and feel so privileged to be where I am and being able to speak to you. I uh, had the opportunity to speak to some colleagues the other day and they were intrigued about, you know, my life, my story, how I got into dentistry. And when I had a chance to have a chat with them, they, they felt that uh, it might be a story worth sharing at this time when there's lots of things going on. So I'm going to describe a story which is layered with me and we're going to call it uh, Cocoon. Cocoon, an unexpected adventure into a line of dentistry. I'm sure you guys all know what a cocoon is. So it's going to start with a caterpillar called Baburbaba. I'm going to call this caterpillar Baburbaba because when I was young, I had a speech impediment. That speech impediment meant uh, I knew that there was something wrong with me and I was taken off for counselling every week so that I could speak properly and it was a huge hindrance in my life. At school I didn't really talk because I was embarrassed that each time I would talk people would make fun of me. If, uh, if we were sat in a coffee bar and one of my friends from school was to walk past me they would call me blah, 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 blah. and it's amazing that I'm in my mid 40s but they still find that funny because my initials are Pavin Balwantale Bhatt, so BBB. So this blah, 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 was something that really stuck with me and it was once at high school when I was in a lesson and I put my hand up to answer the question and I started stammering, everyone started laughing and it really closed me and it, it, it was a tough experience because when you feel you have a lot to communicate with the world and you wish to talk from your heart, when you be, when in essence your fight and fight uh, kicks in and tells you to be quiet and to close your heart. It, it, it really eats you up inside. So from a young age, I knew that wasn't quite right. And as a consequence that I didn't talk, as a consequence of not talking, everyone thought I was thick and stupid. And I used to always be in the middle groups for everything at school. And I had a sense of well, what am I doing here? I'm way too intelligent and clever to be in the middle groups. Why am I not in the other groups? So I realized that I felt I had a disability in my life which right now it's the wrong way to look at it. It's, it's, a, it's a huge gift. So I realized I had to work harder than everyone, which was a common theme. But then when you have not spent most of your life being able to communicate and talk to people, you realize that you don't have sophisticated uh, skills to deal with situations. As a result of that, I became a people pleaser because I could never really express how, what people said made me feel and what my thoughts were. So I, I become an introvert and you can see that that's not really a good thing when you want to become a practice principal. You can see why I drove everyone around me crazy. So those were the early years for me being affected by this speech impediment. One of the processes that I had to undergo was, I, I realized that this persona, this person that had been created as a result, of this was not really the true me. In India, there's this amazing uh, temple built from the ground. And one of the interesting things is that it's carved in stone in it. And when they asked the, the sculptor of this and said, how did you do this incredible feat where from the top of the cave or the mountain, you're able to carve down because everybody always starts carving down and goes up. How could you have got this symmetry and this balance? And he gave the idea that this beautiful temple already existed within this cliff or this mountain. All I had to take off were the parts of stone that did not belong to the mountain. I think David said the same thing. Michael Andrews said the same thing about David, that he did not create the statue of David from clay. He just removed the parts that were not David. Some people call this untethering. There are various words that can be used in a spiritual dimension or a religious world, but what we'll come to realize is that there's a false identity that we've given ourselves. And I realized that having a identity that I had given myself was not gonna help me. So I went on a journey to try and shed that identity. And a lot, a lot, a lot of that journey involves removing all the BS and the nonsense and excuses and stories in our life, because it's really easy to live life in drama. So 
I then had qualified as a dentist. The reason why I become a dentist was my father. My father was a reinsurance broker for a marine company. And my father always felt in the 60s and 70s that racism held you back. In the insurance world, if you do not go to the right school, wear the right tie, go to the right rugby club, you never got it ahead in life. And he always felt that he was held back from the opportunities, even though he was the assistant director in the company. And there was a natural calamity called the Exxon Valdez. For those in your 40s and 50s, you remember what that is. And after 30 years of law service, my father goes to work and he's made redundant that day, ushered out the building and treated like a criminal. It wasn't his fault, but it scarred him. And my father said to me at that point, you want to do something where you cannot be prejudiced and unfairly treated. And it should be your ability and skill that determines your success and not what external people choose. You want to do something where you control your life, your finances and your money. And much more, you, you want to help people because he was really upset with how the financial world was making money by yeah, making extraordinary amounts of money without having to sweat and work hard for it. And I thought about that and my passion in life was always religion, theology, philosophy. I would have loved to go into Cambridge and study that kind of stuff, but coming from an Indian family where everyone is educated, that really wasn't on the card. So I became a dentist because in terms of the remit my father gave me, dentist, self-employed, controlled, tick, 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 tick. And I become a dentist, owned three practices very quickly, did not have a clue what I was doing. I experienced a huge amount of success with absolute zero EQ and understanding, but it was just how it was in the early 2000s. My last practice was a complete game changer for me because it made me realize how arrogant and hubristic I was. And it was a real sort of knock in the teeth because a series of unfortunate events had happened to me and I struggled energetically to be a father, a husband and a principal. Uh, the darkest day was when I had to break my son's child trust fund. He's only six months old because I couldn't afford to pay the girls and the lab and uh, come home, snapped at my son. Everyone started crying. I thought, I, I really hate my life. So I got out and the intention was that I was not clever enough to, to do everything. I, I, I'm just not that clever as a person, but I wanted to find a way in which I can recreate my life and uh, come out as a butterfly so it, it was it was hard but i managed to do that but unfortunately on that journey i've developed rsi flexitendinitis so now my body is not even allowing me to do dentistry the coys kind of dentistry that i was trained to do all the beautiful aesthetic work i had to move away from because there are now limitations in my life but one of the inspiring things for me is that my, my children show me a spirit of never giving up. They have, a, they have a level of grit, tenacity, and endurance that is absolutely inspiring. And it keeps making me want to change who I am and to keep reinventing myself. And through that pain, through those problems, through the inspiration of my children, I've got to a point now where I'm incredibly blessed I still have the threat of being made homeless because I was a victim of fraud on an investment in Cyprus. So I still have a pattern of, oh crap, my life could go down the pan again. But I choose to focus on all the positive things in my life and to create something that is out there that can change the world and to change the lives of so many. The reason why I wanted to share this story is that as human beings, as dentists, we all, sense, we all feel a sense of frustration in our journey with where we are, where we got to, and sometimes feeling trapped or not knowing how to get out of our present predicament. Having been through an absolute hell where I was at the point of not only having to break my son's child trust fund, I had bankruptcy, I had losing my house, and I may still lose my house, but the one thing that's kept me going is to know that everything works energetically in a cycle and if I can position myself to be strong, grounded, centered, optimistic, positive, then that's a huge opportunity. The one gift that I'd like to give you all that I've learned on this lesson is to protect my energy 
because my energy relates to my thoughts, my emotions and my beliefs. Protecting the energy is actually one of the most important things that you find when you look at peak performance athletes or top surgeons even. So we all need to have a morning routine that where we protect our energy and we focus purely on all the incredible things in our life, the things that give us joy, what we're looking forward to, and to have a real positive framing to the day. We need to have an ability where we clean ourselves of all the negative, self-sabotaging thoughts, self-loathing patterns that we all have inside because dentistry is unique because we're perfectionists. And that striving for perfection actually emotionally injures us. Because one of the things to think about is I'm rambling now, so I'm really sorry, but I'm in my flow. As a dentist, I feel that every day I get emotionally injured by patients saying things in the wrong context, with the wrong articulation, and it makes me sad because they may blame me for something that's beyond my control. I find it amazing that a patient may die at a hospital from an aortic aneurysm, and although it's it's a terrible, terrible situation to be in, but there's a level of acceptance and people move on in their lives. Whereas, you know, the mesial buckle cusp fractures off a tooth. And but anyway, we all feel emotionally hurt at times from either our own expectations, or what patients say. And one of the things that we don't do is when we feel hurt, we don't allow time to heal. Think about a football player or an athlete if they are injured there is a time of healing needed and one of the things that's not happening enough within dentistry is for us to accept that emotionally we have been hurt and we need time to heal and to feel safe that we can talk about these things the reason why i've gone off on a complete tangent is that we're talking about energy we need to have a morning routine where we can protect our energy we need to have a mechanism where we can clean the negative self-loathing self sabotaging kind of patterns that may be going around in our head during the day we need to have a period of quiet and stillness and most importantly we need to protect the half an hour we have before our sleep if we can protect that energy before going to sleep it's a bit like landing the plane you just you just, you just don't want to go down and crash you want to gently come down protecting that means turning off the phone having quiet time having reflection time to then think about the day, I think about all the positives in the day, to show appreciation for all the incredible things that day, to talk about the things that you were grateful for, all the things that went really well, all the things that you should be really proud of. It could be your children, it could, it could be so many things in life, but one of the things that I've learned through my life is that this whole game is about energy, and that energy then dissipates down into our thoughts, our emotions, and our beliefs. If if, that, if if there's an issue there, then we're going to perpetuate this cycle that many of us feel in, the, in our lives. And I definitely have felt very painfully previously, and I'm still working on that right now. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share my story and how I got into dentistry, uh, some of my hangups and BS, and how everyone is on a journey of just untethering all those things that hold us back so that we can really become authentic in who we are and live the lives that we've always wanted. So thank you so much for listening. It's now 14 minutes. I've been rambling on and I'm so sorry. And yeah, I feel completely blessed that I've had this opportunity to have this chat with you. Thank you. Bye.